Let's learn how to read and write audio files, extract the audio information as an array, and listen to the results. I'll begin by looking under the Graphics and Sound subpalette. This subvi reads a .wav file. There's a number of inputs and outputs to work with, but the two that are critical to us would be the path leading to the audio file itself and then the audio information. Over here I'm creating a file path control and I'll point that at my default folder and I'll be reading audio.wav. Alright, we need to do a little bit of operations on the result of this sub-VI. First one is I need to pick off the appropriate channel. If I do nothing more, then I will be picking off the left channel or the mono channel if the file is mono. If I create an index that's one, that would be useful for picking off the right channel of audio. But I know my file is monaural, so I'll just leave that as the default of zero. Let me first begin by visualizing this as a plot. All right, there we see the audio information. The values lie between minus one and plus one. Let's go ahead and pin that palette so we can find it a little bit more easily easier in the future. All right, this Express VI called Play Waveform is useful for listening to the results within LabVIEW. You can test your device, you'll get a test tone, and then you can also look at the characteristics of your particular sound card. Now when I run this file, I can actually hear the audio itself. I'm not playing the audio in this video, however. This particular audio clip goes for about 45 seconds. I'll go ahead and pause or, or stop the sub-VI at this point. Now suppose you wanted to do some processing that involved reversing the array. You'll note that this leads to a broken wire, so we need to do something else first. I need to extract an array of audio samples from this waveform data type. So with get waveform components, let me push that out of the way. With get waveform components, there are two of interest. The Y result is the actual audio data as a 1D array of type double. Then I pull this down and select DT. And that would be the sampling interval in seconds. Let me create an indicator to see what that value looks like. Now it might be a little bit easier for us to interpret that if we look at the reciprocal, which would be the sampling frequency in Hertz. And this file has a sampling frequency of 44.1 kilohertz. You can also find out this information in an alternative way and get a little more details too. This would be sound file info. You wire that to the same path control. And sound format is a cluster display or cluster indicator. We see it's a uh, mono, mono file, it has 16 bits per sample, and we confirm the 44.1 kilohertz. So the reverse array is my simple processing. I then re 
essentially reverse the order of operations here. I need to build a waveform data type. I'll use the same sampling interval. Here's my processed audio. At this point I have a waveform data type. Let me go ahead and establish another waveform display. I'd like to confirm that we can indeed see the reversed version showing up. And I think if you study the two plots, you'll agree that this feature that shows up at the beginning is now showing up at the end for our processed audio. Now I'll point out that you can also listen to both the original and the processed version. Although it's important that you make sure that these devices operate sequentially. Wiring the air cluster as I've just done ensures that we hear the, f the input audio first and then we hear the processed audio. Now the complement is the sound file writer that I've just placed on my block diagram. In the same way that I needed to extract the appropriate channel earlier with index array, I need to now rebundle that into an array before I write it out as a file. I'll need a second file path control and I've typed in or I need to type in a different file name to make sure I do not accidentally overwrite my input. Now I'll show you two ways. One is to simply type it in as I've just done or if you have the control available and you've not already typed in the appropriate value say you had created a control from scratch and it was empty like this Then you'll find a, what it seems like a problem. We get an error message that says something about needing to check the file name and try again. This has to do with the browse options as they are set up on the default control. Let's do a right click and choose browse options. We see selection mode is set to files, but it's only set to existing. We need to be able to select a new file name as well. Now I can type in my modified name and everything's fine. Alright, that wraps up this video. Have fun with audio.